Today I'm joined by Mariana Pajon. Mariana is double Olympic champion 2012 and 2016 in BMX Supercross. And not only did she win the Olympics, both of the times a clean sweep, you didn't lose or you won all the races. Yes. And in 2016, also the time trial. Yes. Welcome, Mariana. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Good. Um, a few more of Mariana's achievements. She was junior world champion 2008-2009. And from 2011, she showed the whole world who's the number one in BMX, winning multiple world championships and the Olympics. Yes. Owning the title, nickname of Queen of BMX. That's right. And I'm curious, what's your other nickname about Tata? Uh, Tata, it's about my older brother. When I was born, he was three, and it was really difficult for him to say Mariana. So he just called me Tata. It was easier for him, so everybody started me calling like that at the track and my family. Um, that's, that's how they call me in Colombia. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, Mariana, in your life as an athlete, what was your darkest moment? I think we go through a lot of darkest moments. Um, when we do BMX, we know we have risk, and I think the darkest moment was when I broke my wrist. I exploded my wrist; it was separated. I broke nine parts, I had a lot, a lot of surgeries, and I saw five doctors, and all five of them they told me um, it's it was the end of my career that I will have to think about it because. Um, I couldn't like in the future I, I won't be able to open a door and even even worse riding a bike but six months later I was riding again and competing so um, we know we have risk and we go through so many dark moments um, not just professional and not just injuries but personally mm -hmm. and you have to just go above them and, and be positive uh, two questions come to my mind. When was that injury with the wrist? It was uh, 2008. 2008. 2008. So yeah. just at the beginning of your career. Yeah. Okay. First year of junior. Okay. Yeah. And how do you overcome these dark moments? I think um, there are no dark moments for me. I I just like transform them into challenges. Challenges are a lot of a lot of them. They're just just makes you stronger. So I just go above them and see like, life is showing me that I can be stronger, that, yeah. I, that I can just beat them. And, and if you want, if you really want it, you know, you have to work hard for it and you're gonna have those dark moments, but you have to beat them. So, so you win, win what you wanna win. What was your best moment? My best moment, I think it was London. London, uh, it was like, I, I didn't even won a World Cup before that. Um, I won the World Championships the, the year before, but I was so injured. I was injured the whole year. The year before, I was crashing. I was confused. I also have um, um, a heart disease, so I was like, it wasn't my moment. I was feeling bad, but I really wanted. Um, I did a tattoo on my wrist and it was a contract for me, like I really wanted to go there, but just not, not just to go there, but to want it. Um, it was really special for my country, um, my, ch my life changed, so <laughs> huge change for my life when I came back to my country with a gold medal, mm. uh, I think it was really special. Mm. Okay, I've also written down here you were selected as a flag bearer in 2012. Yes, uh, when I came to London, maybe for the BMX war, uh, you know, it wasn't like expected for me to win because I was just, I was young and I didn't even wear a workout before. But for my country, was the only one that could win a gold. So I was a flag bearer. There was like a voting in Colombia, and I won it, and it was a huge responsibility. But at the same time. I think I won two gold medals in London. Just one entering the, the stadium with the flag and then winning the race. Okay. Two gold medals for me. Cool. What advice would you give your younger you? So if you could go back in time, 10 years, 15 years, with all the knowledge you have now, what would you tell yourself? I think I would tell them to dream big and to think that those dreams 
can be a reality if you work hard for them. So just dream, work hard, believe you can do it. But the most important thing for me is to enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. Even if you win, what I really like the most is what I feel in the gate, just before the gate drops. Just before I win or I lose, it's just feeling your heart that is coming out of your chest and just enjoy it. Just have fun. If you're having fun, then it's just not just your work, but it's your passion and every, everything is going to work. Hmm. So dream, work hard, believe you can do it, um, have it in your hands before you, you actually achieve it and just have fun. Oh, nice. I've written that down for a later question, but it fits in very well now. Your philosophy in life is the future belongs to those who believe in, your, in their dreams? Yes. Is that true? I saw, I saw that phrase a lot of time ago and it was like, that, that's my life. Like, the future is the ones that really believe they can achieve something. Because a lot of people have dreams but they just stay in bed or just at home waiting for that to come. But it's the ones that believe they can do it and just work hard for them that really achieve them. Okay. What are the habits that make you a successful athlete and successful person? I think the habits, they are a lot. I think um, dedication, responsibility, uh, knowing that if I want to do it, if I want to win, then I have to work hard. And I really work hard. Since I was nine, um, I'm training every day. And when I was 12, I was training twice a day. And I was waking up at 4 a.m. to train before going to school and then after school. I think it's dedication, responsibility, and just constant consistency to just wait for that moment. Okay. I've been winning since I was a little, but I was waiting for a big moment to come. Mm. And to my whole country to know what BMX was about and, and to be an ambassador and I knew that that would come but right. you just have to wait, work hard and I think that the thing that really separates me from the others is that I'm always enjoying what I'm doing. If mm -hmm. not I would quit but I, will, I love it, I cannot live without it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that ties in with the next question I've written down. How do you stay motivated? I mean you've achieved everything you can achieve in your sport, arguably, unarguably, what keeps yeah. you going? I think it, it was easier for me to respond to that, like before winning uh, two gold medals. After that, everybody asked me, so what next? You have won everything in BMX, what next? But the thing is that I, I just not love winning, but the feeling just before yeah. um, a main event or just the first model, I love it. Hmm. And what really motivates me is to wake up every day and try to be better than yesterday hmm. and tomorrow better than today. So that, that's what I love the most, to just go on the gym, not just on the track, but just to live more and to, to have more like, better timing of 30, min 30 meters. I, I love just writing every day what I did, so tomorrow I would do better. And now... Um, and doing a track cycling and BMX at the same time and just trying to 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 feel like the little girl just coming into the sport for the first time. So I just, I love riding. Uh, I know some years are better than the others. I'm just, um, w when, when you know all this, you know, you have to wait and, and feel 100% again and you just trust your coach and that'll be all good. Yeah, that's motivated me. <laughs> okay, cool. Do you have a morning routine? I do. I do. When I woke up, um, just like before going to bed, I think positive. And when I wake up, I think positive again and try to be happy and um, try to motivate myself to, to just go and train every day. And uh, I'm just smile. <laughs> yeah. You don't do it every day because we are humans, we are no robots, but is that when you beat that moment, it's, it's what makes the difference. Hmm. I guess everyone wants to be happy. How do you do it? I mean, you say you want to be happy. How do you do that? <laughs> I think I'm happy. Um, I think for me it's easy. I just go back and just, I'm so thankful 
for everything, for the country I was born, the family I was born into, um, the sport I choose, and everything that came with that, even the injuries and everything. I'm thankful for all that, um, for all the people I lost already, but they are watching me and just giving me uh, the strength to, to just just go on and beat it. Um, I'm really thankful, so I'm happy. Uh, I know we are, we have some challenges in, tra in in life, but I just enjoy what I'm doing. And why not just to be happy to have a beautiful family, beautiful home, everybody is, is good, and you do what you love. It's your passion, but at the same time it's your work. It's easy to be happy, if you want. That's the best thing, if you can make your passion into your job, right? Yes. I believe, work. It, I believe that work. will work. Yeah. That works. Same for me. If I'm with my athletes, I think I don't work a single minute just because I like it. Yeah, so, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. Every day is fun. Even if you, you have to just go and pedal and do some road cycling yeah. <laughs> that I don't like. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's my passion. Yeah. So I'm having fun <laughs> every yeah. time. How do you prepare yourself for important moments? Um, I love pressure. I think I, I'm even better when I have a lot of pressure, when everybody's expecting me to, to do well. And I think the, the, when I'm confident is when I go back and, and see if I did well, if I did my even more than my 100% uh, when I'm on the gate and, and just I'm there, I'm confident. And, and that's how I am prepared for for that moment, hmm. to just be confident that I did all what I could. Okay. So if you, I'm really interested in that. <laughs> if you are in London or in Rio in the final, yes. just in the gate, what goes <laughs> to your head? Um, it was two different things. Uh, in London, I was expecting, I didn't know what, what to expect. It was the first time, um, but I was at the gate, I was, I was really strong, like mentally. Like I saw everybody on the gate that they were, they were all moving the feet or they were nervous, and I was okay. I was like, um, this is a dream come true. I'm in the Olympics. I'm representing my country, and I'm on a final. It's really cool. So I'm just gonna do my best. And I, I was thinking like one more lap. I've been doing good. Just one more lap, like I did, and it's good. Uh, it was a little bit shocking to me to to have like the four. They get four because yeah. I'm on the middle, and I knew like the other girls were the last lap was faster for them. But I like no, I, I can do it. Just one, one more lap. But then in Rio, you know, uh, it was a single time. It, you you know what to expect. You know what it feels like to be in the final. There were a lot of Colombians there. A lot of Colombians in in the track. Uh, just waiting for me to win. I got medal again, and it, it, it was different. Like I was on the gate, just thinking, um, just go and do your best. Uh, I was really confident because I um, go work really hard for real. Like if I work hard for for London, I work harder to Rio, like two times more. And I was just there, not expecting anything, just expecting to do my best. I was really happy because I was healthy um, and I was prepared. So just one more lap. Exactly. We kind of touched on that before. How do you overcome setbacks if things don't go your way? Um, I'm really strict on myself. I always want to win because um, I'm used to it and I really want to win. But sometimes you have to realize what's your moment and the thing that winning is not just getting first. You have to really get over that and see um, where is your preparation at, um, what do you want, what do you want to feel, uh, if you're doing better. For me, winning is not just doing a good lap, because when I go back and see London's main event, that lap, it was clean, but it could be better. Mm. Like a tap, I, I, I overjump some jumps, so I want to be better than that. And so that's what I thought, like winning is not just getting first. If I get second or eighth, even if I don't make the main, but I feel good and I did all my best, that's, that's winning. So you have to go back and see 
if you train, if you did everything, then you were ready. That's how it's supposed to be, and that will make you stronger. So. Hmm. That's okay. it. <laughs> yeah, I've written down a note here. Again, we touched on that before, but if you um, your quote of the future belongs to those who believe in their dreams, is that also helping you to overcome setbacks? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think an, a huge achievement comes with so many things before. Um, and you know, like I feel when I have a gold medal and I'm singing my national anthem, everything goes through your mind what you've been through before just having that, that medal because that moment passed really quick. But when you, you see um, all the crashes, or the disappointments or some days that you just don't want to train. Mm. That's where dedication and determination uh, wins and beats motivation. Mm. Um, that's when you see uh, if you have a dream and you believe in it then everything comes and you just have to wait for it. Okay. I need to dig a bit deeper into it. You said dedication and determination beats motivation? Of course. Sometimes you just elaborate. I mean, I, I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. But some people just believe I'll it's be, all about motivation. Yeah. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I'll be a robot if I tell you I woke up every day wanting to train, or just mm, if I woke up every day just wanted to go to the gym. I have my bloody hands again and sore. Uh, I will be a robot and I will be lying. Sometimes I just don't want to train, but then. You know, like something inside you tell you, uh, just go, just go, because you want to win. So that that's that that will make the difference. Just go for it. And if you, if you don't want it, just stand up and, and go train. Mm. <laughs> so that's you. You're not always motivated. But when responsibility comes and dedication comes and discipline comes, then that will be it. <laughs> nice. And then the last one on dreams and <laughs> setbacks. I've written that down. I just wanted to ask you that. Yes. Everyone has dreams, more or less. Yeah. But at some point you also see your dream fading away. Yeah, sometimes. Um, it's like a little kid uh, saying, uh, when are we, uh, I want to go to the moon. Then you have a dream. But how are you going to achieve it? And sometimes you, you see, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling good or... or I think that that goes when you are thinking in others too much, when you are comparing to yourself with others, because then you go, you do a lap, and you go and you do a time, and it's worse than, than yesterday, and you you tell them I'm working, and the time is going even, it's not a good time, but then you have to just believe. Believe in the coach, believe in the process, and and just wait for it. Sometimes when when it comes and it transforms in an obsession, it's not good. Uh, before having the one hundred um, the one hundred number that I ride with, I had one 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 eleven because I I was I was just winning winning or winning, and that was an obsession, and I started to crash and. Then, I didn't win any World Cup, but then I found out that it's not just winning, it's giving all, all you can. So it's just to separate an obsession to just a dream that you can work for it and just wait for it. Who is your role model and why? I um, have a lot. When I started writing, I was also doing gymnastics. So Nadia Komaneci was like my role model, I wanted to be like her, I wanted to go to the Olympics in gymnastics because BMX was not in the Olympics. Uh, but then um, I don't say now, also I really wanted how he spoke and, and the way he, 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 he was racing and, and doing competitions. And there is also a Paralympic athlete from Colombia that is called Moises Fuentes. And he been through a lot. And he achieved so much. So I love him and just the way he talk. And he he just motivates you <laughs> and mm. want you and get you to 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 just dream for a gold medal. Mm. 
It's interesting you say that Nadia Comaneci is someone I would love to interview. Mm, yeah. Really. It's <laughs> no, awesome what she did. She's amazing. Yeah. So mentally. So Nadia, if you see that, get in touch with me. Uh, <laughs> well, me <please>. first, <laughs> first with Mariana and then with me. <laughs> okay. What is the best advice you have received and who gave it to you? Um, I think it was my mom. My mom um, and my dad once took me to the track um, when I wanted to start it. Um, and they took me to the podium and they were so scared for the little girl to do BMX. In Colombia there were no girls that they were racing. So it was just boys and they didn't want me to do it. But at the same time they wanted to just be with me and if, if I wanted they would just go for me. But they took me to the podium and they teach me, teach me what was it because I didn't know. So if you win, you, you just be there and step there. But we don't want you to win. We want you to be the best of you in whatever you want to do in life. So just be the best of you. And, and that's the, the sport everybody wants to be. But just think about you and if you want to be there in studies or just gymnastics or I also used to race, uh, race cars. So in car racing or BMX, just be your best of you, not just beat everybody. Beat yourself. And that's what I did in my studies and my career and everything in life. Okay. How does a typical training day look for you? Um, I think it, it depends on the, the calendar part. I think most of the BMXers do. They, I woke up, I go to the gym. Um, then in the afternoons I go to the track. Uh, I do some technical stuff or spins. Depends on, on the day. I also do track cycling, so sometimes I go to the Beltrum um, and, and work with them. Or it depends on the day. I, I go to the gym three times a week, then every day at the track. Um, and I love sprints, so I do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Typical BMX rider. Yeah. Loves the sprint. Yeah. <laughs> and doesn't like doesn't like the road rides. No, nope. <laughs> we don't like that. <laughs> we I can to. relate to that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You mentioned that you have been a gymnast or you did gymnastics. Yes. Do you feel that has helped your BMX? I think so. I think so. I think gymnastics helped help me with so many things in my life for BMX is just to to know how to control your body and to be flexible and, and, and just to jump. Even crashing, no knowing how to crash and mm. roll. Oh, I yeah. think yeah. yeah that really helps. Okay, the bonus question, do you want to nominate someone? Two. To be interviewed? Um, I really want to, to have Sam, why not? I really admire Sam, Sam will love me for a long time. And just to have Alice and Sam it would be cool. Um, maybe my strongers, but I really admire too. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, get in, I try to get in touch with them. Yeah. <laughs> Where can people find you? Where can people find more about you? Um, I think I'm, I'm really lonely to say that, but I have, I have social media, so I think it's easier uh, to just go on and see my private life a little bit and how we go and how we train. So just add my name, Mariana Pahon, and you'll find it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Mariana. That Thank was you. a really great interview. Thank you. Thank you.